Alright, welcome everybody. This is going to be video number 41. We're going to talk about conservation of mass. So as you guys like, here is the summary in the beginning. You're going to simply describe the conservation of mass. Then I want you to think about what does the conservation of mass allow you to do, especially in the lab. What does it allow you to do? How does Antoine Lavoisier relate to chemical equations and list three of his achievements? And say you have 375 grams of reactants, what's the total amount of mass you can have in the product? So here we go. So let me tell you about an old dead dude, and he's definitely part of my club here. His name is Antoine Lavoisier. He was born in 1743. He was a chemist and a lawyer. Uh, he was branded as a traitor, believe it or not, and he actually got guillotine, which means his head got chopped off with 27 others. So why do I bring him up? Well, for a lot of things. He was the first guy who really um, worked hard on measuring accuracy and precision. He actually found or purified the elements hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. He also predicted that silicon exists. But more importantly, he um, contributed to chemistry through the theory of conservation of mass. And it's something we're going to both study and put into practice in lab here in school. All right, hang tight. Antoine Laurent de Lavoisier was a French chemist and biologist who first organized the list of chemical elements. Lavoisier was born in Paris, and after his mother died, he inherited the family fortune. He was educated in Paris and was expected to follow his father's career in law, but instead opted for a career in science. Lavoisier's passion was for chemistry, but he also studied geology and worked on the first geological map of France in 1769. Lavoisier married his 13-year-old wife, Marianne, when he was 28, and she helped translate documents and created sketches for him throughout his career. During his experiments, Lavoisier discovered the role of oxygen in respiration in plants and animals, and gave a name to the gas hydrogen. He also discovered that oxygen and hydrogen combined made water. He explained that air, which was previously thought to be an element, was actually a mixture of gases, and devised the system of chemical nomenclature, or naming, which is still used to this day. He also wrote the first ever chemistry textbook. He conducted chemical experiments and carefully weighed the chemicals and the products, and stated that changes of matter in an experiment do not change the mass of the matter used during the process. He clarified elements and compounds, and also explained the results of other scientists' work with his theories. Lavoisier also worked as a tax collector, where he attempted to introduce reforms to the French taxation system. He was accused of being a traitor by the rulers of France at the time, and was convicted and executed by guillotine along with other tax collectors in 1794. His death was mourned by the French mathematician Joseph Lagrange, who said, It took them only an instant to cut off his head, but France may not produce another such head in a century. He was pardoned posthumously 18 months after his death, and is still referred to as the father of modern chemistry. Uh, so let's talk about conservation of matter. Big stars, write this down, highlight it, circle it, do something to it. So Lavoisier states that during a chemical reaction, matter cannot be created or destroyed. So what happens in the case of our chef down here where things have gone awry? Well, what you can do is you can alter or change it. However, you cannot, under any circumstances, make it disappear or make it no longer exist. I like to call that poofing. You cannot make it go poof, okay? You have to account for it somewhere. So, quick reminder, mass is the amount of matter in any object, and we use our triple beam balance, or the TBB, uh, where the SI unit was kilogram. So here it is put into theory. The amount of mass on the left of the arrow, which of course we say yield, and the right of the arrow is equal. And I'm showing you here actually a picture representation of a reaction. This is an acid-base reaction. If you look, they're both on the balance to begin with, and they're 92.95 grams when they're by themselves. If you react them together, Look at, so you've got an empty one, you've got a full one. You can definitely see chemical reactions taking place, right? Big color change. And again, it's 92.95 grams. So it's the same amount of mass. It's just very different. It's altered and changed. You can apply the conservation of mass theory to calculate either the amount of reactants you have or the people you begin with and the amount that you end with or the products. So let me give you an example. So you are looking at HD, of course, is mercury, mercury oxide here. If you were to bust it down into its parts, into just mercury and just oxygen gas, let me give you some of the mass of the product. So if each of these are 25 grams, right, we know that together on the right-hand side, together they're 50 grams, right, because we have to add them together because they're both there. So how much would mercury oxide, the one on the left, actually be? Well, 
you think about that. So if I have 50 on the right, no matter how it's distributed, 50 on the right, then guess what? You gotta have 50 on the left. So I hope you got this one right. You should have 50 grams of the reactant on the left. And in this case, we only have one reactant. Okay, so we're back at summary time again. Here are your four questions. Remember, you can either turn this in with a notebook, a binder, or you can do it online with um, Google Classroom. If you turn it in by a Google Classroom, don't turn it in until you're done on Thursday night and just uh, hit turn in on the button, okay? All right, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in class.